start thinking of these things just like regular people and stop thinking that people are against you because they don't take what you're saying. They're, you remember Jesus said, remember when they reject you, they're rejecting me. Leave it at that. <laughs> but the reason why we can't handle this stuff is because we got stuff in our souls. You know what the stuff is? From last time we met, you brought out the decorations again in your mind. You hang it on your Christmas tree of victimness. <laughs> Going to the party. But I'm showing you these vivid pictures because that's what the devil does to people every single year. Every year. Every year. And people, their prayers are like, oh Lord, help me get through the day. So I, I don't lose it on somebody. Well, that's kind of fake, isn't it? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, but 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 we we have these things in us all, every at some level. When, here's what I do when I find it. When I go somewhere, I can't stand somebody. Like I literally can't stand them. I just feel like I'm gonna. It doesn't. Ha I mean, I don't know. Last time it happened, but I check and see what I still got in me that they left in there that I didn't get rid of. I don't give anybody my real estate. I'm pretty close fist in that way. I don't give people my real estate. And here's what I mean by that. I don't give people place in my mind. I don't. I don't put people's trash in my mind. I don't have a storage house for it. I don't have a warehouse. Don't have, they can't rent space. And you know what rent space looks like? Because they do something nice for you, you feel like you owe them? Nope. I don't do that. I don't rent space. Mm -mm. I don't rent space because you can't buy me out. If you're doing something I have to correct you in, I will correct you. Flat out correct you. And next time you see me, it's like I never said a thing to you. Why? Because I don't store it. <laughs> it's gone. You might have to remind me about it if you want to say something to me about it. Okay? Because I need to know that when I make a decision, I'm making it because it's something God will want me to do. That gives me the least amount of error. So if I do make an error in a decision, I can, I can kind of go back and see where it occurred. I don't have to go through files and files and files of information to figure it out. It will be glaring at me. And then I can fix it from there. Do you see? You can't do any of these functions that you were created to do, that you were born again to do, if you don't let love come in. And be the resident, permanent resident of your soul. It has to be the gatekeeper of your soul. This is how, you know, the Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing. This is how you don't get weary in well-doing. Because so many victims would want to come and ask you for help. And before long, you can become callous to them. But if you have love be the, the gatekeeper, you could literally take every case as they come and truly give it a chance. You see what I'm saying? And you don't make blanket decisions. Because what if your prayer request was actually answered? <laughs> the person that you've been like this hard and never got, and they finally showed up and they're ready to like do what you've been praying. And because you... <laughs> have already put up the tree and hung all the ornaments from last year. <laughs> you slammed the door like the girl did when, when Peter showed up at the door for the prayer meeting, <laughs> that they were praying for Peter to get free. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, and in our case, instead of saying it's his angel, you say, oh no, that's their pretend face. It's not really them. They're just pretending. <laughs> I let people pretend. I let them do everything they, they, they decide they have to do. 
I let them do it. Just go ahead. Build your case. Do your thing. I give the benefit of the doubt at every opportunity. Because I'd rather they be wrong than me be wrong. And love never fails. So if I do my action in love, they can't cause me to fail. So I, I'm never afraid of losing something because somebody won one over on me. They didn't win it over on me. I didn't lose something. Because <laughs> love never fails. <laughs> you see? Do you know how many people left this church in the beginning when we first got here? Because they just, women aren't supposed to talk. I just didn't know that. Nobody sent me the memo when we got here. <laughs> but we didn't know that at the time. But they used to write lengthy letters about me, and that's why they left. The final thing is that's why we left. And do you know some of those people today on social media, I help? They inbox me for help. <laughs> they find me and ask for help. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? If I... First of all, if I was like, na 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 na, if I was into fairness, I would be telling their names, their address, you, right? Like, look, I won. I could care less. As far as I'm concerned, the devil lost something. He lost one of their best agents against me. <laughs> he couldn't help them. I had to help them. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? One of God's agents had to help the one he put up against God's agent. That's how I see it, right? Not the person. <laughs> so when you're in the presence of someone who's done you evil, like major evil, and you feel like, <gasps> take it as a moment where literally things are being revealed to you that are still in the filing cabinet that you didn't get rid of, because you hadn't had to deal with it for a while. So when they're in your presence is when it'll show up. Or if you're in a similar, similar situation as a person that did that to you before, these things will show up. Deal with them then. That's when you arrest them. Don't go home and think about it. <laughs> Are, have you ever seen the police? <laughs> Have you ever seen the police find a criminal and say, I found you. I'm going to go back to the station and pull all the files I can find about you. I'm coming back to get you. That person's gone. It's the same thing with thoughts, with stuff hidden in our soul and stuff like that. When, when it shows its face, get rid of, arrest it right now there. Don't go, well, I can't deal with this right now. I have to deal with it tomorrow. Really? It ain't gonna be there tomorrow. And you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna have another missed opportunity because it'll show up again when the opportunity comes for you to do something that that did not need to be there. <laughs> okay. So one, I have, a, I, have, I have notes. It says big point. <laughs> Here's the big point. The big point. <laughs> it says one of the devil's job is to steal the love of God from being distributed through you. Because the love of God cannot be felt by people if people aren't giving it out. This is why when all these movements try to attack you, you know, I, on social media, I give people a warning. For the next 30 days, I will be addressing the subject. If you don't think you want to hear about it, suspend my account with you for 30 days. If you want to hear about it, feel free. I'm just going to give my opinion on these subjects. No harm, no foul. But what the devil wants to happen is for people to fight with each other and leave a gap and a barrier. So I fight, and I fight with 
with the love of God because I'm like, see, the other part of this is because we don't know how to fight with the love of God, we just leave it alone. Just, I'm just going to be loving and not say anything. That's not being loving. <laughs> and while we are thinking we're being loving and not saying something, the devil is broadcasting a lie. And all those lies built up convinces people. It gets into people's souls. I'm at the point now I could imagine that if I don't say something about something that's a lie that's happening in current events, people might actually, on my page, might think it's okay. <laughs> because I do talk about things that are not okay. So like if I wouldn't say anything about it, they're probably like, Pastor Fia is probably okay with it. I haven't heard her say anything. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, don't be wishy-washy. Be in or be out. But if you want to be out, then remove it from, your, from seeing and hearing it. And then realize you have nothing to say about it, whatever happens, because you didn't participate. So don't allow lies to be said and you not counteract it with the word of God and with the truth. And sometimes you don't have to do it on the feet of the person that says it. You may just need to address the whole thing altogether. Because the topic is now open. So let's talk about it. Daniel was po a, pol a politician. He was captured into being one. <laughs> Think about it. He was actually taken as a slave and put in that position. Joseph was a politician right out of prison. These people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> These people made huge decisions that changed the world that they lived in by being involved. And they didn't even have the Holy Spirit living in them. But they knew God. Do you see that? There's no way we can't know God to the level we're supposed to when we got the Holy Spirit living in us. <laughs> the only way that's happening is because this stuff right here. This stuff right here. All those people that hurt you in the past, it's over. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you dig up that fairness root tree you got growing with all the fruit on it, all of those things will be removed automatically. It won't even show up. You know how bad people have treated my, me in my life? And I know the first time they see me after the last time they did what they did to me, they're probably bracing themselves for like, and when they show up, there's nothing there. Like nothing ever happened. Imagine how disappointed the devil is at that. <laughs> you should wake up every day and your goal should be to disappoint the devil another day. You know what people do? They wake up hoping they don't take the devil off today. He's already ticked off. That's his nature. He's always mad at something. He's never going to be happy about anything. <laughs> it's a black hole to make the devil. It's not our job to make him happy. He, he has no happiness to gain. There's nothing about him that needs to be happy. <laughs> right? So don't make that your goal. The next big thing is, it's in Job chapter 7, 11, and 15. You can read that on your time. And Job 10, 1. And Job is talking about his soul being in anguish. The thing, when the devil attacked Job, his soul suffered. And where does health and wealth come from? the condition of the soul, what did he lose? His health and all his wealth, right? And if you read those verses, you'll see it talks about his soul. But here's the thing. Fear is what opened the door to that. Fear affected Job's soul and caused it to go into anguish. Fear. Fear. There is nothing that gets rid of fear more than perfect love. 
The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. You don't even have to do nothing. You just bring love in, fear has to go. As a matter of fact, your daily confession should be there is no fear in me. Because I have perfect love in me to cast out fear. If you just watch one segment of a news program, the, the goal is to put fear in you. But if you set up a system in your soul where fear doesn't have entrance any way it comes, then you protect your soul. All right, we've got to wrap it up. Um, 1 Corinthians 2.9, you can write this down. 1 Corinthians 2.9. The scripture, this is what the scripture means when it says no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. See, when we let love in our soul, it's the equivalent of loving God back. You can't love God if you don't put his love in your soul. What other cheap love are you going to give him? <laughs> like, what other type of love are you going to offer God if you can't offer him the type of love he is. You talk about the unequally yoked. Well, there's your example right there, <laughs> right? So those who love God, when you activate your love for God by bringing that into your soul, I mean, just showering it in your soul. I has not seen, ear has not heard. You know what that means? So the devil has no clue what the heck God has in store for you. He just got to follow you around and, and like, <laughs> say, I'm going to tell you my story after this. You're going to be shocked. This just happened today. I got this phone call. So, uh, Wait a minute. Job. Job chapter 7, verse 11 and 15. And then Job chapter 10 and verse 1. As a matter of fact, if you just read Job's entire dialogue about how his, it's all about his soul languishing and all this stuff. But here's the thing. His friends were trying to tell him that the reason this happened to him was because of his spiritual status. But the Bible kept saying in all these things, Job didn't sin. Job was a righteous man. So the devil sent Job's friends in to convince him that he was doing something against God. Like, you know, he was sinning. But the Bible kept saying Job is a righteous man. All it was th that the devil wanted Job's soul to keep fear in there and keep getting polluted so he could kill him. But God had already said you can't take his life. But Job didn't know that, right? So it's what Job didn't know about God that messed up his soul. You remember God had to come give him a lesson of who he was? That's how we learned about all the, the big animals and stuff. You remember? You see how this is coming together? So every time, listen, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You can't get any better than that, honey. This is it. That is it. <laughs> the status of your life, the condition of your lifestyle, the frustrations of your day, it's in the soul. But the devil doesn't want you to look there because you're going to catch him. So he's got to tell you it's your righteousness. you got a righteousness problem. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's all in the book of Job. <laughs> Think about all your church friends that tell you, not here, but church friends <laughs> and other churches you went to, that tell you, you know, that you probably did something against God. You probably sinned against God. That's what it is. You sinned. That's why. That's why. It's your soul that's messed up. So while you're trying to keep forgiving yourself every, oh God, forgive me for sinning. Oh God, please, I'm a sinner. He is packing more junk in your soul. Because remember, every thought you have about your salvation and your connection to God is sending swampland material to your soul. Because it's in your mind. Remember, you're thinking with your mind. So you're adding more debris to your soul, hoping to feel better the more you're begging God for forgiveness. <laughs> This is like crazy. <laughs> and then the person who doesn't feel the need to do that is told that they're proud and arrogant. <laughs> you talk about the liar. That's how the devil works. He is a liar. <laughs> 
He's a liar and he is a thief. And he wants to steal information too. That's how he does. He manipulates to get information because he don't know what the heck is going on. <laughs> so, I'm done with that. You guys go check out Job. You're going to be like looking at it from a whole different perspective. Because God made it correct in the first chapter. That in all the, Job was a righteous man. And everybody's like, well, if he's so righteous, why did this happen to him? Isn't that what his friends were accusing him of too? <laughs> and people teach doctrines on this stuff. Doctrines. And yell at you that you're some claim it, blab it person if you don't think so. <laughs> anyway, off the soapbox. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, I thank you tonight for your word. Father, I pray that you will open our eyes, our ears, our understanding. Father, I pray that your love will flood our hearts. Wash out the trash that the enemy left behind. Wash out the generational nonsense and all the words and the traditions of men and all these crazy things that came from hell itself. We pull down those strongholds, break them, crush them to ashes. In the enemy's kingdom, ashes never turn to beauty. They get washed away by the river of God. So Father, we just say, wash us, cleanse us, dig up roots, remove trees, anything that did not get planted in your love, get it out of us. We ask for it, Father, we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Fiona here. I hope you're having a great day. Just wanted to come and share a couple things with you. Um, but I just I wanted to talk to you today about fear and discouragement and how they're related together. Um, many of you might be going through things that no one knows about or that's new to you or it's the same old, same old. And the concept or the idea behind that thing happening to you is that you are fearful and you are discouraged and you want to give up. For you to lose... You really um, have to give in to things. You have to give in to the temptation to give up. And one way that you can get that done is to be fearful. If you are fear, it's harder to get you to lose. Actually, it's probably impossible to get you to lose. I'm going to walk and talk at the same time as I'm, I've arrived at my destination. But to be a winner... You first have to show up to the fight try to do is to get you not even to show up. And one way to discourage you either sleep in, in depression, you don't even show up, or you leave that place altogether. Wherever it is that God sent you, or what it is he called you to do, you just leave it. Because you are discouraged and you feel rejected. And so you think everybody's out to get you. When in fact it's just one person, one group, one, you know subject matter that's being attacked but but the enemy has to bombard you in order to uh, win against you because if you would hook in with God you can see where he will fight with you and for you so you want to stay the course and do the fight if you don't do the fight then there's nothing to win there's only something to forfeit and you are not forfeiter and you're not a loser. So the way that you give in to discouragement, the way that you give in to losing a fight is fear. The spirit of fear will come in with the pressure of time and pressure of an expert, possibly more than one expert. And these experts will tell you how much time you have to win a game. So <laughs> and they're only going based off other people who've had the same fight and have had results that are similar. 
but they don't really know you. They don't know your faith. They don't know your God. They don't know anything about you. So if you receive what they're telling you, then you are now subjecting yourself to having the same level of fightmanship as the people who have gone for you in these statistics that they cite for you. You see what I'm saying? It would be like soccer teams that are playing now for the world, um, the International World Series has gone on uh, these past couple of days. We've been following the soccer game. And if each team would go in, uh, playing off of, working off of the strength and the statistics of another team, not on their own uh, strengths, not on their own ability. So they, they line up their play, you know, their strategy for play would be based on what somebody else's team can do or what they have failed to do or what, what they're allowed to do. That's how you lose something. So I just want to encourage you today, don't let fear kick you out of where God sent you. Don't let fear stop you from pursuing an assignment from God. And certainly don't let fear tell you what to do. If you know me very well. My words for fear would be, that's unacceptable. You guys have a fabulous day, and I'll hopefully catch you again sometime soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. Today, my husband was teaching about our inheritance in Christ. And one thing I like to tell people about our inheritance is that every born-again believer has 100% of the same inheritance that Jesus has. And we have the same inheritance as each other. So if you see something that another believer was able to receive from God, then you realize you can have that same type of thing as well operate in your life. The question becomes, do you want it? Do you think you can have it? Or what else do you think needs to happen in order for you to receive this inheritance from Christ? A few things that get in our way is not thinking we're good enough, not thinking that we deserve it, or thinking that it is too much to have. Well, all those thinking don't come from God because Jesus gave it to us.